The history of our Carmel has its roots in the life of the prophet Elijah on and around Mount Carmel. During the Middle Ages, a group of men lived on Mount Carmel as hermits in order to dedicate their whole lives to God and to His Son, Jesus Christ, close to where He had lived through our Blessed Mother Mary. They called themselves the Brothers of Blessed Mary and set up their lives around the spring of Elijah, the Wadi Cherit using huts or caves as the first cells. Around 1209, they asked Bishop Albert of Jerusalem to formulate a rule for their lives. They flourished on Mount Carmel until around 1291, during the time of the Crusades, when the Saracens had invaded and martyred a number of them. Many fled to Europe, including France, Spain, and Belgium. While in Europe, the men called themselves Carmelites. Exiled from their silent cloistered monasteries on Mount Carmel, the hermits needed to adapt to life in the busy city. Assuming a semi-contemplative lifestyle, these new friars became more actively involved in the world. Eventually, groups of nuns were also established. In time, however, both the men's and women's orders became lax in their religious observances as the material ways and comforts of life led them further from the original simplicity that had marked their beginnings. In the 1500s, a great Spanish lady and saint, our Holy Mother founder Saint Teresa of Jesus, saw a need for reform of the Carmelite order to go back to their roots as a community of hermits with separate cells and a place to celebrate Mass as its center. She wished to simplify the current way, which had become more complex than the original hermits had intended. She instructed her sisters on prayer and contemplation and enriched the eremitical and communal aspects of Carmelite life. This became the Theresian Charism. St. John of the Cross helped St. Teresa as they were great friends, and he became known as the Carmelite's Holy Father founder. This reform of both nuns and friars spread from Spain to France to Belgium as well as to the rest of Europe and other continents beyond. In 1931, Sister Marie Levine, also known as Mother Therese of the Child Jesus, arrived in Canton, China with three other Belgian nuns. There, she was visited by two young and well-educated friends, Cecilia Long and Agnes Tse. In God's time, the faithful Sister Mary Agnes would be sent further abroad to do even greater things for the Lord. One day, Sister Mary Agnes shared her hopes with Mother Therese that a Carmel would be founded in Hong Kong. This happened in 1933. The Carmel located in Stanley Bay in Hong Kong flourished. In 1972, Sister Mary Agnes, now known as Mother Mary Agnes, and Sister Agnes Marie Wong, flew across the Pacific to explore the possibility of a new foundation on Vancouver Island, Victoria, Canada. While in Hawaii, they met Honolulu Bishop John J. Scanlon in the downtown parking lot of the Cathedral of Our Lady of Peace. So moved by their visit and the deep wish, like a wishing well, to enhance the life of the diocese with their special charism of contemplation and prayer, Bishop Scanlon sent a letter to Mother Mary Agnes inviting her to found a Carmel in Hawaii instead of in Canada, as Vancouver already had a contemplative order there. Mother Mary Agnes took his request to heart in prayer. During a general chapter assembly in Hong Kong, she reflected on the, on the directive given her by the former Carmelite General Superior, 
Blessed Father Marie Eugene, go and make a new foundation. It seemed to grow clearer to her that that would be her task. Before World War II, the Belgian mother Therese of Lisieux had already sent a few nuns to Macau to found a new Carmel there. And 39 years after its establishment, Hong Kong's Carmel was already too full to accept more members. New members had to wait a long time before they, like her before, could enter into the life of Carmel. So although Mother Mary Agnes and the other sisters preferred Vancouver, she found that God's will was to found a Carmel in Hawaii. On October 25, 1973, the seven founding members of the Monastery of the Holy Trinity in Kaniohe, Hawaii arrived. Mother Mary Agnes Tse, Sister Agnes Marie Wong, Sister Caroline Chow, Sister Teresita Tam, Sister Mary Angel Wong, Sister Marie Tang, and Sister Agnella Yu. Father Dan Dever and the seminarians who were at St. Stephen's at the time helped the sisters to develop the grounds. They dug seven flowing ponds, one after each of the nuns, in which they raised fish, watercress, water lilies, and more. They also planted papayas, bananas, and green onions. Later trees included avocados, tangerines, oranges, and starfruit. Many beautiful flowers were also added to the Garden of Carmel. In 1985, a generous donor from Belgium, in memory of his mother, paid for the construction of the current chapel, which was dedicated by Bishop Joseph Ferrario. Around 1975, the nuns had already joined the Mary Queen of Carmel Association in the United States. Putting their contemplation into action, the nuns tended beehives and made honey candy, peanut brittle, Father David's favorite, cookies, chocolate fudge, and nougat to help support their contemplative lifestyle. They also cultivated bonsai and other plants, even airling the lychee tree near the parlor to produce smaller plants. Imagine six nuns climbing the tree to do so. They also learned how to paint on china and make greeting cards. Bananas, watercress, and elodi at one time were also taken to market by the Friends of Carmel. In 1999, the Carmelite nuns experienced their first decrease in membership with the passing away of Mother Mary Agnes. In 2003, Sister Mary Angel followed. Although several new postulants came and went, none had the vocation to grow Carmel further. Sister Elizabeth de Jesus entered in 2010 and Sister Mary Therese Wilson entered in 2014. Both are yet awaiting their solemn profession and acceptance to first vows, respectively. Without at least six fully professed nuns, a quorum or chapter cannot be met to allow them to advance in religious life any further. Because Mother Agnes Marie and Sister Caroline passed away on October 13, 2014, Sister Teresita on August 19, 2015, and Sister Marie on June 30, 2018, Sister Agnella remained the only professed nun. However, when Carmelite Father Daniel Chowning, first definitor of the order, came for an official visit to Hawaii in January 2017, he began an upward trend by suggesting that maybe the Carmelite Association of Nuns in the Philippines could be asked to send five more fully professed nuns so that the monastery would be able to continue in Hawaii, where the prayers of the nuns are very much needed. Bishop Clarence Larry Silva strongly agreed. In May 2017, three nuns from the Philippines, including the head of the association, Mother Mary Bernard Tescam, came to see the Carmel of Hawaii and determined whether or not they would recommend refoundation. After the three returned to Manila, the Hawaii sisters received the good news on Pentecost Sunday, 2017, that the refoundation process would proceed. On November 26, 2018, Sister Mary Frances Aporto from Cagayan de Oro Carmel in Cagayan de Oro City, Sister Assumpta John Teresa Macapanas from Carmel of St. Therese in Quezon City, Metro Manila, and Sister Mary Angelica Guevara 
from the Carmelite Monastery in Lipa City arrived at the Daniel K. Inouye International Airport, accompanied by Mother Mary Bernard and Carmelite Father Daniel Olim. They were eagerly greeted by Bishop Larry, members of the Leadership Association of Religious Communities of Hawaii, and Deacon Fernando Ona. Two more nuns are expected to arrive in February March of this year. The charism of the Carmelite nuns follows the example of St. Teresa of Jesus, a combination of the solitary life of the hermits of old and of community life. St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower of Jesus, summed it up in this way, My vocation is love. The nuns here in Hawaii keep this spirit of simplicity to continue their vision and mission by living in pure love for the Holy Trinity so as to channel transforming graces to all the people of God. Beautiful flower of Carmel, most fruitful Grateful to God and for all of you for your warmth. 
warm and generous welcome to us, to our new home, the Carmel of Hawaii. We are be assured of the continuity of our Carmel's praying presence in your midst. For here in Carmel's garden, prayer is our life, and our life is our prayer. Mahal namin kayong lahat. Aloha, my sister Asunta. We are indeed very grateful to your prayers and generosity. It is because of your deep faith and love for the church, especially for the Diocese of Hawaii, that made this the foundation possible. Thank you so much for everything and God bless. Aloha ori no kokua ia mai a pao a ua ko o mau e noi aku e ke akua e ko u ko mai kai mai kela a me kele a mea e ia mea o oku i loko o ke kupai anaha ala. Thank you for all of your support as we continue to ask God to bless each and every one of you in a special way. Sister Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you.